Good morning. You're just in time. Welcome to the St. Gabriel Cafe, your sacred space to sip on today's local blend of faithful encouragement. Let's start our day together. Good morning. Come on in. Pull up a chair. I'm Dave Orsborn. And I'm Amanda Miller. Friends, welcome to the St. Gabriel Cafe, our live and local morning show. This morning, we're going to unpack the mysteries of the rosary with Dominican Father Paul Merich from St. Patrick's Church, pastor of St. Patrick's Church here in Columbus. Good morning. Now say it. (laughs) Good morning. It's great to be here. (laughs) Thanks for being with us. Good morning, Cam. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Good and gracious Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for all the blessings and the graces that you pour out upon us each day for sustaining us and for loving us so well. Lord, we thank you for the gift of Our Lady. We thank you for the blessing that she is in our life. We thank you for her motherly care, for her constant intercession for us. And we thank you for the rosary and the prayers that you have given us to contemplate you and the life of um, your life and all the mysteries. We just ask for greater awareness and deeper trust and deeper love this day. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Carol and I went for a little walk at Ennis last night. Did you? Pulled in and there was an AMA 20 car there. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering if you all had made it there because you had said maybe you would make it after dinner. I had forgotten that they close at seven now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a bit of a rush mm-hmm. with the new autumn hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we were able to do the the full loop around uh, Ennis. Oh, good. Done a really nice walk in. Good. But, yeah. It was a bit rushed though. Mm-hmm. Running over mm-hmm. after a, but it was a really a nice, nice Italian meal. <laughs> did you have a nice Italian meal? <laughs> did. Excellent. Spaghetti? Nookie. Yonki. Okay. Yonki. Yum. <laughs> Yeah, it was a lovely evening. I I feel like I'm just trying to soak in all the good weather I can before I know it starts to get super cold and miserable. So I've been spending my last several days outside. <laughs> it's going to warm up. I think we're supposed to get some rain also this weekend. Mm. So mm-hmm. You know, but Ennis is beautiful in every season. So That's true. That's true. Way to look on the bright side. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Even when it's not going to be so bright. <laughs> well, you know, actually, we have a bit of a, a tradition in the fall each year. There's turtles. You've seen the turtles at Ennis. So they have the frog pond kind of over near where the rose garden is, which mm-hmm. is completely dry now. And then... You walk further down the hill, and they have a little bridge over mm-hmm. an area. There's turtles there as well. But one of those turtles from one of those places makes its way over towards where the like herb garden area is. Okay. And it climbs up above like the little wall somehow. I've never seen a turtle <laughs> climb, but somehow it gets in there, and it lays its eggs. Oh. So, and... Um, so in that area, we'll see little turtles hatching. They, they kind of mark it off. They, um, put some protective little fence around. So the mom lays the eggs, stays with them for a little while. And then mom disappears and the eggs are left. They're kind of partially buried. Um, and huh. yeah. When do, when do turtle eggs hatch? I think it must be in the spring. I think that that's so they, why she kind of buries it under. And they don't under, freeze over the winter. That's so fascinating. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. If we have a turtle expert, uh, Will, are you listening? <laughs> um, yeah, but it, it, we've never seen the baby turtles. Okay. I guess that's, um, they don't all make it. So yeah. down to wherever their destination is. Hmm. But I, I, I just love Innis Woods. Uh, we have, we're so blessed here in Columbus to have great metro parks. Yeah, we really it's are. so many places to go. And it's just a, a neat little, you get to see the, the seasons and yeah. the celebration of life. Mm-hmm. Cam? Dave? 
<laughs> did you see the Northern Lights last <gasps> night? Yes. Did you? Yes. <gasps> did, did you? you? No, did that after happen your, after dark? After yeah. your time, Dave. <laughs> okay. No kidding. I missed it. Yeah, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but my friend, she runs in, she knocks on my door. She, are you awake still? I was like, what are you doing? It's like, it was like almost 1030. And we go outside and there's this r- dark red hue in the sky. I don't think we, ha- we had too much light pollution to really see it. Yeah, it was the same for us, but you could definitely tell that something was going on yes. up there. Um, that was abnormal. For Central Ohio. <laughs> yes. Um, but my younger brother-in-law is currently on a field trip up at Lake Erie. And it was, I mean, he was sending some pictures in our family wow. group text. It was just bright greens and pinks and it was crazy. Yes. Actually, someone I know is currently up at Damascus for a retreat mm-hmm. and she sent some pictures mm-hmm. and it looked like she was in Alaska or something. It was stunning. Was it one night only? I don't know. All I know is it was 10.30 at night and my wife was already in her pajamas and she was like, I want to get in the car and drive. (laughs) No, we're going to bed. Yeah. (laughs) Well, maybe I'll check it out tonight. Hopefully it'll... Hopefully. You know, it's a weekend. Good luck. I I briefly looked it up last night because I was like, this is crazy. So the little bit that I read, it said, a strong geomagnetic storm is impacting Earth this evening. That was yesterday. And that means that the northern lights are likely to be visible as far as South Columbus. So that's what happened. It was really cool. I really do hope it happens again so I can be in a better viewing area. Yeah. But also that sounds... And awake. Yeah. And awake. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, Dave. So very cool. Nice. Thanks for letting letting me know. And I hope some of our friends got to see it as Mm -hmm. well. Let's take a look at today's gospel. Today is Friday... Of the 27th week, 27th week in ordinary time, we're looking at the gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 11, verses 15 to 26. I also believe it's Pope John the 23rd's feast day. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll talk about another feast day as well in a few minutes. (laughs) Luke uh, 11, 15 to 26. When Jesus had driven out a demon, some of the crowd said, by the power of Beelzebul, The prince of demons, he drives out demons. Others, to test him, asked him for a sign from heaven, but he knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste, and house will fall against house. And if Satan is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that it is by Beelzebul that I drive out demons. If I then drive out demons by Beelzebul. By whom do your own people drive them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his palace, his possessions are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks and overcomes him, he takes away the armor on which he relied and distributes the spoils. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. When an unclean spirit goes out of someone, it roams through arid regions searching for rest, but finding none, it says, I shall return to my home from which I came. But upon returning, it finds it swept, clean, and put in order. Then it goes and brings back seven other spirits more wicked than itself who move in and dwell there. And the last condition of that man is worse than the first. Amen. 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 Do you want to join us, Father? Father Paul Merritt, OP. What's always interesting with this one, Jesus talks about the, you know, Satan cannot, if he's against himself, how will he be able to to stand? And I think here's a way, and as I'm reflecting on this, when we think about truth and falsehood, because, you know, think about, first of all, think about like if we try to lie our way out of something, we're going to get caught, Mm -hmm. you know, that there's something about uh, where Jesus says, as for the truth will set you, set us free. 
and he's kind of aiming at this here where he's talking about if you know it's by the power of satan he's driving out demons you know how can how can how can that happen you know because it's somehow you know there's the falsehood is just going to give mm-hmm. way that's what happens when we try to lie ourselves out of something or if we believe in falsehood there's no foundation there's no root it's going to it's going to collapse i think that should give us also assurance when we see false ideologies or anything in the world today that you know is going against our faith that it may seem it's victorious for a while but it's it's teetering it's going to collapse and so i think that's where we look at christ who is the truth you know and he is the one he is the driving out evil not by the power of the evil one no because he's god and this is something that uh I think it's something that should assure us, you know, whenever faced with troubles or difficulties, is that Christ has got everything in control mm. and that falsehood cannot stand. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, I was struck today by every kingdom divided against itself will be laid waste mm. and the house will fall. And uh, it just made me think of how much we want like Christ kingdom to reign, right? And especially in our work here at St. Gabriel Radio, um, we want Christ to reign. And in our day-to-day lives, you know, I think we all have a desire that Christ will reign. And yet um, the enemy tries to get in there and he tries to divide us and he tries to confuse us. And um, I think there are times sometimes when we have to just stop and ask ourselves, okay, is, is something going on here that's not natural and is the enemy trying to really put pressure on us right Mm -hmm. now? And uh, is he trying to divide us? And if so, if it's not, if it's not for any natural reason that things are going wrong or things seem extra hectic or whatever it is, and it's a good idea to take a step back and say, okay, Lord, do I, do I need to go to prayer and ask you if there is a way that um, I haven't been faithful or if there is a way that the enemy is just trying to get in here and I need to get some backup with some extra prayer or whatever it is because the enemy comes to still kill and divide. And that's a reality. And we have to be aware of that. And um, try not to just muscle through it ourselves, um, but ask for that divine help um, so that his kingdom can reign even in those situations of our lives that, um, you know, need a little extra help. Amen. Kim? I was struck by and reflecting on the uh, little bit of a discourse in here that Jesus talks about the strong man who's fully armed and guarding his palace and one, one who's stronger comes and attacks and overcomes him. I think if Jesus lived today, he would use a modern analogy that I like to, that this passage reminds me of uh, in Star Wars, the Phantom Menace, (laughs) when they're in a submarine underwater, the main characters, and they get attacked by a giant fish and (laughs) another big fish comes and eats that fish. (laughs) And Qui-Gon Jinn, the Jedi master simply remarks, there's always a bigger fish. Mm. Great line. And, uh, same kind of analogy, right? When 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 there's one fish that's attacking you, there's always a bigger fish. Um, what I'm reminded of is is simply to remind myself, who is this God that I put my faith in? Mm-hmm. Who is this God I put my trust in, right? When the ways of the world come at me, when the evil one attacks me in my life in big and little ways, when I'm feeling discouraged or down or um, beat up or like I can't, you know, enter into my prayer time even fully, um, reminding myself who, who, who is Jesus? Who is this God? Um, he is the biggest fish, right? He is the strongest man. Um, he is, he is all powerful. And yet I get to call him as we reflected earlier this week on the gospels, I get to call him father. I get to call him my God. You know, it's not just some, uh, big man upstairs, but he, he's, intimately concerned with my life um that just blows me away (laughs) you know i think that that is the kind of reflection that could just you could spend the rest of your life on it Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, thinking about my heart, uh, how um, a divided heart is um, will fall. You know, it, it'll it'll break, and that's where um, thinking of the, of the ways that it can be divided. How you let things into your heart, and there's really nature loves a vacuum. Is that the you know? Mm-hmm. So so um, something's going to fill the heart. Are you, are you going to fill it with the light or with the darkness? Mm-hmm. And you know, pray um, that what I'm letting into my heart um, is, is just the light and where there is darkness, let the light drive it out. But I want to bring some Aquinas into this father. Mm-hmm. Um, the desert fathers talk about the eight thoughts, um, which pretty much equate to the vices mm-hmm. and temptations begin with thoughts, right? Yeah. So you mm-hmm. let these thoughts into your mind, right? Then that will, we're talking about the vision will preoccupy you Mm -hmm. or um, uh, lead you into sin. The way to fight those thoughts, those vices is to develop the virtue muscles. Mm -hmm. And I think also too, what to be guarded of the senses Mm -hmm. because you know, you could have these thoughts that are popping into your mind, but they somehow had to get there through the senses. Mm. And so it could even just be because of a memory you know, for, you know, from something long ago that has left this thought lingering there or something, you know, is, is you could say growing and developing. Uh, but that is the, you know, the, the thing with, with thoughts as they go, sometimes they could run, you know, it's not as if somehow I'm going to shut, you know, hit the off button <laughs> on this particular thought. It could be, um, it could be hard to all of a sudden just dismiss them. And so that's where, like you say, the you know the virtue muscles are being trained in the virtues, you know, or turning to the Lord, you know, for the divine help, you know, against mm-hmm. thoughts that could that could lead us to sin. Because and that's all part of the the human action. Then where we're confronted with something, do I want to do this or that? And what is the what am I going to decide? What is the route that I'm going to take? Is it possible that the rosary and meditating on the mysteries of the rosary might be a weapon here? Absolutely, because you're in, you are engaging the mind. You're mm-hmm. engaging the thoughts. You know, because that's the thing, and that's also the important thing. With you said meditating, meditating in the Christian sense is filling the mind with the thoughts of God and the things of God. That meditation is not meant to empty the mind. That's more of an Eastern boom. Right. It's more of the Eastern. Mindset. If I empty the mind and then I'm clear of all distraction, uh, that's the complete op- the complete opposite of what we do in Christian meditation. We want to fill the mind with God, and so the Rosary allows us to meditate on the mysteries of Christ's life, to think a little deeper about something, and then it also the repetition is something that will help avoid the distraction. Hopefully. That's what we call a tease. We're going to be talking about the <laughs> mysteries of the rosary, unpacking the mysteries of the rosary with Father Paul Marich, the pastor of St. Patrick's here in Columbus. Friends, thanks for being with us this hour. We always appreciate you taking time out of your morning to spend with us here in the St. Gabriel Cafe. Stay with us. St. Paul the Apostle is hosting the 13th Annual Sacred Heart Congress on Saturday, November 9th, 2024, from rosary starting at 7.30 a.m. and the day will conclude before noon. The purpose of the Congress is to gather in unity and prayer to grow closer to the loving heart of Jesus. Mass will begin at 8.15 a.m. as well. Our speaker this year is Father Nathan Cromley. We are excited to welcome back to offer the Mass Bishop Earl Fernandez, Sharing from Father Jonathan Wilson, Adoration and Benediction, led by Father Stosh Daly, and a ministry update led by me, Emily Jaminette. 
A children's program will be led by religious sisters for ages four and up that will be both faith-filled and fun. Register at welcomeisheart.com, $20 for individuals, $30 for families, scholarships available, email info at welcomeisheart.com. That's welcomeisheart.com. Do you have a minute for lasting happiness? Living virtuously is the way to freedom, happiness, and holiness. To grow in virtue, we must learn about it, practice it, and persevere in it. This is what the saints have achieved with excellence. An excellent example of the virtue of orderliness is seen in Blessed Humbert of Romans. He lived orderliness heroically by helping the newly established Dominican order achieve better organization in the 13th century. He established the liturgy, the houses, the missions, and the constitutions or rules in a clear and understandable way. His work gave the Dominican order the freedom to carry on their teaching and preaching. Let us ask Blessed Humbert of Romans to pray for us, that we may grow in orderliness. Educate yourself in virtue. Learn more at educationinvirtue.com. I am Lori Kroc, and this is a Holy and Healthy Minute. In physical training, two key tenets for success are consistency and moderation. Consistency is showing up regularly. This is necessary to learn, to progress, and to see results. Consistency is also an essential element in developing a strong and fruitful prayer life. St. Teresa of Avila said, How often have I failed in my duty to God because I was not leaning on the strong pillar of prayer? The second tenet is moderation. Practicing moderation in our temporal activities, such as exercising, eating, drinking, shopping, and socializing, helps free us from potential attachments and opens our hearts to doing God's work. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to guide us to consistency and moderation in every area of our lives while leaning on the strong pillar of prayer. Welcome back to the St. Gabriel Cafe. I'm Dave Orsborn. And I'm Amanda Miller. Joining us now in the cafe is Father Pear Marriage, OP, that means Order of Preachers. He's the pastor of St. Patrick's. Good morning, good Father. Good morning, Amanda. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good. Okay, we have a lot to talk about today, but mm-hmm. first things first, Father. Mm-hmm. We are celebrating something very special. Yeah, it, today's the anniversary of the opening of Vatican II, 1962, the anniversary of the Catechism, mm-hmm. okay. promulgated in 1992. <laughs> that, like okay. you said, the Feast That's of St. John the 23rd. Okay, two. But I also, don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What, what else is it? The, but Friday? also... It is your birthday. Oh, Father. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Happy, Happy birthday. Can I light your... Sure. We have this beautiful bunt cake that was brought in. Yeah, Ginger West. Thank you, Ginger. <laughs> so thank you, Ginger. Happy birthday, Father. Thank your you. candle is now lit. You know the tradition. You have to blow it out. Make a wish. All right. Lovely. Well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> We're so glad to be celebrating with you today. Thank you. It's great to be here to start my birthday. So I yeah. hope it's a continued day of blessings. Well, you're going to be celebrating the 1145 back at that's St. Right. Patrick's. Yes, that's yeah. right. So, I mean, if anyone wanted to show up with cakes, <laughs> pies, Oreos. What well, if... the office staff will be happy. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your What's your favorite dessert? Oh, I love tiramisu. I love, and I love ice cream. You could just bring all the ice cream. <laughs> mm. Although down here, you know, I mean, Greater, I love Graders, but I'm from Youngstown, so we have Handel's ice cream. Okay. We have a few locations around here that I'm grateful for, but that's that's really good. There's Handel's in Columbus? There's one up in, uh, I think, one in Powell, and there's one around Hilliard. I've been to the one in Hilliard. Yes! Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And they found, the, the original Handel's is by our Dominican parish in Youngstown. So if you're a Dominican that goes through Youngstown, you know handles. Mm. Okay. I was actually wondering where it originated from because the yeah. other day I was driving and I saw one. I was like, I've only ever seen one in California. Oh, no. No, it's so, from Youngstown. It started okay. in a gas station in Youngstown, Ohio. Oh, yeah. gas station ice cream. <laughs> Nothing beats it. <laughs> but it's right by St. Dominic Parish in Youngstown. So Nice. Where I found my Dominican vocation. Well, may your day be blessed. Thank you so much. Yeah. Our community loves you. Thank so you. Thank you for great to be here. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. So, mysteries of the rosary. Mm-hmm. What do we mean when we say mystery? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's October, so we're probably thinking end of the month type of, you know, mm-hmm. haunted mystery. No, this is, no. you know, when we talk about mystery, mysterion in Greece, in Greek, it's an under, you know, this something that is presented to us of our faith that we're never going to be able to fully unpack or grasp the toll, you know, what has been revealed to us, but we try to enter into that, mm-hmm. you could say, because what we're doing here is with the revelation of God, you know, and everything we talk about this, this word mystery in many ways, like the mystery of the mystery of God himself, the mystery of uh, the mystery of our faith, you know, which is a reference to the Eucharist. But we often think in our culture, or whether it's from literature or, you know, from kind of the, the scary sense of mystery, you know, or something that has or something to be solved. Or, solved. Yeah. yeah. Or, or I even think of sometimes something that's unknowable. Right. Right, you know, that I, I remember Unsolved Mysteries as a kid, you know, that great uh, <laughs> yeah. TV show. Robert Stack would be there. Robert Stack, With yeah. that deep voice, you know, that, you know, um, mm-hmm. and you always love when you got an update when the mystery was solved. But the thing is, with a mystery of our faith, you know, this is that we are finite. Mm-hmm. Only God is infinite. You know, and so you're trying to deal with unpacking the mystery of God himself in his infinity. It's not going to be possible, but it's not, it doesn't mean that we're somehow in the dark Mm -hmm. completely or that god is unknowable to us god reveals himself to us he he shows his might he shows his power and because he has given us an intellect and a will we are able to respond we are able to enter into that mystery to know about god and the things of god even but we're not going to get the full the full story it's not going to ever be solved Mm -hmm. you know there's a great line at the end of john's gospel where saint john talks about if you know if if all the good things that Jesus did were recorded. I don't think the world itself could hold the books uh, just to show how amazing is the Lord Jesus Mm -hmm. and all the good that he has done. And so it's not going to be a mystery that we're going to like crack the puzzle to. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the mystery of God, it is something that is so great and beyond our finite power, but that God invites us to enter in and to reflect upon and to grow in holiness because of that and to receive his grace you know as we enter into the mystery is what we're seeking then is to see how god is being revealed yes in the oh, mysteries yes because what god you know this is the, the divine what revelation. god is revealing to himself is who he is and how he saves us and he's looking for our ascent of faith mm-hmm. in that and for us to respond uh, in love to give ourselves un- give ourselves to god uh, because we recognize that this is how we are saved and that i believe that Jesus has come to save us and that I am going to accept this and give my assent to this without reservation. It makes me think of in this ascent of faith and the the mystery in that we'll never be able to reach the bottom. Mm -hmm. At first that can sound maybe like slightly frustrating, but at the same time, there's something so beautiful about it because God is Mm -hmm. infinite. We will never be able to reach its depth. So every time we meditate, it could be something new. Right. And that's also, and that really get gets down to God is the fulfillment of all our desires mm. in our in our final end. You know, as long as we are in this life, we're never going to be completely satisfied. Mm-hmm. We're never going to be completely happy because our happiness is only in God Himself, and that will only be attained when we have the beatific vision in heaven. So we don't have that yet, and it's like. But that's why in this life, reflecting on the mysteries, there's always more to glean. There's always more that we can take in. And it happens in our life of prayer. It may happen when you say go to adoration and you all of a sudden have this new insight that you never thought of before. And maybe somebody else did think of it at some point, certainly somebody, but it's, it's new for you. Mm-hmm. you know, or if you're reading on the scriptures. You know, this is why the tradition of Lexio Divina mm-hmm of meditating on the scriptures you know it's all it's been described as uh like a cow chewing yeah right. chewing the grass yeah you know where it's you know you do the initial take in and then that's like the cow you know yeah. eating but then there's this process in the cow's digestive system where there's a lot of going back and forth uh it's <laughs> different said that from, so well, well, well. It's different. <laughs> very nicely done yeah, this, um, as we're eating our cakes yeah, so there you go <laughs> but that uh well, yeah, that, that, that <laughs> didn't think we were going to talk about that this morning. <laughs> but that there is, you know, that's that is how it's been described in uh, in the um, the history of Lexio Divina, where 
there's the initial intake of reading the scripture, but then that meditation yes. is is like that, you know, internalization mm-hmm. of what you're taking in. But then you kind of go back to it, uh, you know, to lead you into prayer, and then that's going to bring you into contemplation. And so this is why, um, and again, probably because the Benedictines were all farmers, so they had the cows there in their fields. That was a an easy analogy for them to understand <laughs> the practice of Lexio Divina. Mm-hmm. Father Paul, can the same thing then be said of the mysteries of the rosary? Absolutely, because when we talk about the mysteries of the rosary, you know, this, and this is, you know, this is a way, I think, a, a, a way to counter when anybody accuses Catholics who pray the rosary of vain repetition, mm-hmm. because a, a lot of times people like to take that line from Mark's gospel, and it's like, oh, there you are just repeating those Hail Marys over and over. It's vain repetition. No, it's not vain repetition it is right you know there is that repetitive aspect we could talk about why that's there but the whole point of when we pray the mysteries of the rosary or when we pray the rosary is to reflect on those mysteries that it's not just a random set of hail marys on a bead to distract us or not keep us focused on something that when we pray those decades of the rosary it's meant to help us enter into the mystery that is before us whether it's the annunciation or yeah, the visitation. So the repetition helps us to stay focused on that. Then is that the we're, because it, there is repetition? You have the beads, yes. so it's it's um, you, you can be praying with the scripture, mm-hmm. say for the Annunciation. Right. Mm-hmm. But then what? How do we actually use the beads to help us pray, mm-hmm. or, so, or the repetition of the Hail Marys? Well, you bring up a point too with the you know. So obviously. You know, you don't need a set of rosary beads to pray the rosary, you know, mm-hmm. doing the prayers. You know, ten, ten fingers, fingers, there you go, God, <laughs> yeah. God gives rosary. Our lady really you know. knew what she was doing. Yes. <laughs> you know, obviously it helps us keep um, keep focused. But, the, you know, th- there is a physical aspect to this as well because when you are holding a rosary and you are fingering the beads from bead to bead, it does actually help because, remember, we are humans. We have bodies. And so by doing something physical, by holding a rosary, by moving your fingers over each bead, that also helps to keep a focus mm-hmm. as we pray on these different mysteries. But then the repetition is meant to, first of all, help us turn to Our Lady over and over again with each Hail Mary, mm-hmm. Hail Mary, you know, 10 times over. But then to, you know, when we're praying to Our Lady, we have a focus on her in a particular way because she is involved in the life of Christ in these mysteries. If not an actual, you could say, character in the uh, in that story itself you mm-hmm. know that we're reflected like say in the in the annunciation or visit visitation you know maybe in some of the sorrowful mysteries we don't have her right up front with us but we in the in say like in the agony in the garden but because christ took his flesh from our lady you can never separate her from him she's always in the background in some way or another mm-hmm. and i think that's always you know, important for us to remember when we are praying the rosary, returning to Our Lady, asking her to assist us as we reflect, as we meditate on the mysteries of her son's life. We're speaking with uh, Father Paul Marich from St. Patrick's, the pastor of St. Patrick's, fine Dominican friar and friary there. Go ahead and take a bite. I won't ask you a question for oh, a no, second. I can no, go ahead. The- no, um, you should. It's your cake, Father. <laughs> and it's so good. There's it little so crunchies good. in it, too. Mm. Uh, so... In the big book of the rules of the rosary, which there isn't a big book of the rules of the rosary, there's but a, there's a book. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, um, there isn't a rule book. So if you're entering into this meditation, mm-hmm. there is no rule that you have to stop at the end of 10 Hail Marys. I mean, if you're entering into the mystery and, and you're having a fruitful, so mm-hmm. to speak, prayer experience on the visitation, it's okay to stay with that, right? Well, are you are you saying like keeping more Hail Marys going, or just or kind of just, staying just, with the mystery? Just staying with I the think, mystery. I think what you could do, yes, that there's some, there's nothing that says move when on. you've ended the decade. Yeah, no, yeah, like move on. Uh, there are different practices with when it comes to meditating on the Rosary. Like we did something on Monday night at St. Patrick's. We had an event mm-hmm. for World Rosary Day, which fell on the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. And so that was when where Father Stephen Dominic Hayes, who's the prior for the local Dominican community, he did a preached rosary. So we would begin the rosary, 
each decade with, you know, announcing a decade. And he gave like a little five minute homily, short, short sermon on each mystery. But that was something that helped keep the meditation going. And I don't, you know, I think it's, you could think of a comparison, say at mass, where it's encouraged maybe to keep a, a few moments of silence after say the homily or after receiving communion. I think there's nothing that says after you finish that glory be in Fatima prayer of a mystery, keep a little bit of time for just silent Mm -hmm. meditation before then moving on. I think that would be, you know, a place to do that. Certainly. I think the, the sense of the decade in the 10 hail Marys, that is part of the structure of the rosary based in part though, because of the Psalms. Okay. Because, Oh, when you uh, when you had 150, you have 150 psalms, and before the luminous mysteries, when you would have had 100, and um, when you would have had 15 mm-hmm. mysteries of the rosary, 15 times 10 gives you 150. So that's where there is a tie-in between the rosary and the psalter. Why the rosary has also been called Our Lady Psalter. I had no idea, Dave. Did you know that? I did actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You've hung around Dominican. Right? <laughs> exactly. That's really beautiful. I heard that come up once or twice. Yep. Yeah. The well, with the um, we doing the the ten mm-hmm. uh, hail marys in, in a, a decade. Mm-hmm. Also, obviously, for the community aspect of praying the rosary together, mm-hmm. it, it keeps everyone on track. Right. <laughs> right. Right. So, right. I mean, some of these practices might be better for like private mm-hmm. devotional rosaries, not your. Uh, you know, group rosary, you know, if you're leading the rosary at the parish, and yeah. if you say, we're going to take now five minutes of silence after each mystery, you uh, you may lose some people. So. <laughs> Father, you mentioned that it's repetitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I guess I'm just thinking, in terms of praying the rosary, mm-hmm. there is a, um, it's a devotion. Yes. But at the same time, mm-hmm. there is a, um, you hear uh, quite often pray the rosary every day, which mm-hmm. is a beautiful thing to do. Mm-hmm. What would you say for those who are struggling with doing it every day or finding it to be a natural devotion to them? I would say maybe start light. Okay. So if you have a hard time praying the rosary, can you give a decade a day? Mm. Just try those 10, you know, the, the Our Father with the 10 Hail Marys and, and with the Glory Be. Just to kind of wean yourself, you know, onto this devotion. Then maybe go for another another rosary. Or I'll tell this to families too. You know, they want to sit down for the family rosary and, you know, the baby starts crying and little Johnny starts running, you know, <laughs> where, uh, where he's not supposed to go and, and you don't get a family rosary in. Well, could you get a family decade in? Mm. You know, that could be, so that could be more on a practical, right. you know, need uh, if you have young children. But also if, you know, because it, it is something that, if you're not familiar with it, if you didn't grow up with the rosary, it could be, you know, hard to, to grasp, but I think also, or, you know, spending time to, you know, get to know the mysteries first, Mm -hmm. you know, to know what are you going to be reflecting on so that it gives you then a starting point. Because I think if it, if your starting point is just the repetition of the Hail Marys, that could come across as, as difficult because it's like, well, where, where are we going with this? Mm -hmm. You know, because that's something we always have to keep in mind with meditation. We're, as Christians, when we meditate, we're going somewhere with this. We're going to God. We are focused on God. So I think that could also be a way to look at those fifteen, those 20 mysteries that are in the rosary, maybe reflect on them in Scripture as a starting point so that you could then enter into the mystery and say, okay, now I'm going to spend some time and pray these Hail Marys as I reflect on the mystery. Mm-hmm. I'm going to push this point a little bit, Father. Okay. See what you have to say about it. Um, uh, okay. I th- I think sometimes there's some Catholic guilt over uh, over the idea of, oh, I didn't get my rosary in today, or, mm-hmm. or even the idea of it's just not a devotion that I can enter into very well. Mm-hmm. What would you say to that? Like, is it, is it so important that every Catholic should be praying the rosary? Or is it sometimes we have other devotions? What is true? It is a devotion, so there's no obligation. You know, we're not bound to it now. For me, as a Dominican, I'm going to encourage everyone to pray the yeah. rosary because this that is gets such... a little awkward. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, I think what we could say, though, is, 
it is a devotion that has taken on you know it's kind of been integrated into our catholic life sure you know so yes there's no while there may not be an obligation it is something that at least needs to be taken seriously Mm -hmm. you know that or recognized as something that is so integral now to catholic devotional life to our devotion to our lady that we can't uh we just can't pass it off right you know, even if maybe some person has a difficulty entering into it and so you know i think that's some that would just be one approach that we should at least all have a respect for it mm-hmm. no even question if, you know yeah. and even if somebody has a difficult time uh being drawn to it but there is you know there are other there are other devotions to our lady just different prayers the litany of our lady you know which maybe that could be then the starting point because there is a repetition to that always asking our lady pray for us pray for us but with different titles mm-hmm. you know and it's shorter too. so there could be um i think at one point there were 50 titles for our lady in the litany which would have been nice you could just use it prayed on a rose now you know there have been some additional titles you know added on so yeah. Need some extra beads. <laughs> you, you could also try the Franciscan crown rosary. Right. Well, and we'll just leave that what? there. Well, that's like seven decades, right? You're going. <laughs> you know, in the in the in the Eastern Church, the practices uh, of the Akathist hymn, which is this long, you know, liturgical prayer to Our Lady, uh, that's basically the announcement of Gabriel to Our Lady, mm-hmm. but all drawn out into this. Uh, all these different titles of Our Lady. And there's repetition there. You know, Hail, O Bride, and Maiden Ever Pure hmm. is, the, is the repetition, but it, it would be like, imagine your first joyful mystery taking three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate, Father, that you said, you know, if, if at least we all have just an utter respect for the rosary, mm-hmm. because even Our Lady herself several times in history mm-hmm. has said, you know, pray the rosary. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so I think that's an important point too. I think it was during our Lexio, uh, Father Paul, when mm-hmm. you, you brought up memory. Yeah. And I have so many just very dear memories of praying the rosary um, with the family, you know, mm-hmm. as the girls are growing up in the family rosary. But then also um, rosaries uh, prayed at uh, at wakes and at funerals and and it just brings me right back to to those moments and rem- reminding me to intercede mm-hmm. for others also as I'm praying the rosary yeah. so either on on each on each beat to offer an intention for a family member mm-hmm. or for for something is is that a part of the tradition yeah, I think with the rosary because it's a devotion you know you're not it's not governed by the big rule book. The big of rule book, you know, like you know, like the liturgy, <laughs> yeah. you know, where there are yeah. regulations on how and and what you can and cannot do in the liturgy. I had a um, this Dominican friar, Father Giles Dimick, who taught at Steubenville. Did you know him? You ever meet him? Or <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I, Father Stephen Dominic has talked talked about. Yeah, he always talked about the trimmings of the rosary, where uh, could happen. You know, you get to the glory. You know, you get to the end of the the decade and. You know, you got the glory be, and you got the Fatima prayer, and you have kind of all these uh, additional little devotions at the end of each yep. mystery. But there is something about the rosary that it can be adjusted to one's needs or devotional practices, or maybe even of a of a community, whether it's a parish, a family, a religious community. For us as Dominicans, like we, I would say we pray the rosary in a more liturgical style. So we would go, we go side to side when we pray the mysteries, similar mm-hmm. to how we would pray the Psalms. Okay. There's, even the way we open the rosary is different. We like we don't start with the, the creed and the Our Father and Three Hail Marys. We, we open the rosary similar to how we open the Liturgy of the Hours. So while it's still a devotion, for Dominicans, we give it more of a liturgical structure. Uh, maybe in a parish prayer group or something, there could be something with using scripture, uh, you know, like a little introduction of uh, you know before each mystery just a little line you know verse from the from the gospel john paul ii saint john paul ii also emphasized you know the way of when you're in each mystery after the name of jesus adding what's happening to him mm. you know so like when you're on the third sorrowful mystery you know uh, blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus who is crowned with thorns for us 
over and over. So there's no prohibition against things like that. Right. And actually, that's a good encouragement then to to stay with that mystery and to go deeper into, mm-hmm. you know, as, you know, Christ carries mm-hmm. his cross. And I would say, too, and, be, because it's the rosary is adaptable, there's nothing that prevents you from praying it in different places, whether it's praying before the Blessed Sacrament, whether it's praying at home, whether it's praying in the car. And you're right, that there is a, uh, it, it is a devotion, and because of that, it could be prayed at different places. Hmm. Father Paul Marich from St. Patrick's Parish with us. We're talking about unpacking the mysteries of the rosary. So we ha- have five mysteries, or four mysteries of uh, of the rosary, the joyful mysteries, uh, the mysteries of light or the lu- luminous mysteries, the sorrowful mysteries, and the glorious mysteries. Um, do you have a favorite? I love the sets of mysteries, the joyful. There's just, and I... I yeah, really love the Annunciation because you just draw into it's it's the preaching of the gospel of mm-hmm. Gabriel. So that's the giveaway Dominican answer. We kind of <laughs> I'm also doing a plug for Saint Gabriel Radio. You know. Well, we have uh, outside the cafe. Mm-hmm. We have the uh, Annunciation, right? But that's uh, of of Fra Angelico. Or is, is that a Fra Angelico? Yeah, or, yeah. That's yep. mm-hmm. Donated to us by the Dominican friars at Saint Patrick's. There you by go, Fra Angelico <laughs> himself, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's old. But there is, uh, you know, there is something, for us, especially as Dominicans, there's something about preaching the gospel and that sense of joy, that there's that, when we proclaim Christ, we're not just doing it as like, okay, follow Jesus, you know, come on. No, we're doing it with a joyful spirit that (laughs) he is the Savior who has come. And so when we talk about the joyful mysteries, it's it's not so much a, you know, they're not the the giddy mysteries of the rosary or the, (laughs) you know. Over the top happy. No, it's it's joy. Gaudium in Latin. It's something that's lifting mm. our weary hearts, you know, from the depths, from the depths of sin and darkness to the goodness of God. And then so that opening of the rosary with that joy, it's bringing us then uh, into the mystery that Christ has come to save us. And that's what we as preachers are meant to do is yeah. proclaim good news of great joy. <laughs> Actually, as you were sharing all that, Father, I was just thinking, yeah, actually, some of the joyful mysteries um, don't initially have that exuberant joy because I'm sure during the Annunciation, Mary is like, wow, this is intense. Or right. or maybe um, during the Nativity, you know, they were in really bad conditions. Mm-hmm. But but through the- all of that, it, it, there is such a joyfulness right. about Christ coming into the world. Or I always find interesting, like two of the joyful mysteries are, are also two of the seven sorrows of Our Lady. When, uh, with the, the prophecy yes. of Simeon. Yes. You know, and then with Christ finding in the temple. And because it's always in, there is a sense with the joyful mysteries, they're always looking, f- looking at the cross in the background. Mm-hmm. Because that's why Christ came. But what is that? That joy is the sense of, the gospel is coming to lift up our weary hearts. So even in the prophecy of Simeon, you know, it's this, yes, it's this joy that this newborn baby is being presented in the temple, fulfilling the law of Moses, but there is, the cross is in the background. But that's our salvation, that even in the sorrow of the cross, we should find joy in that. Mm-hmm. That's a really great insight into the Christocentricity mm-hmm. right. of of the rosary. Right. Um, I mean, you can be meditating really on any of these mysteries or any of these decades and go deeper mm-hmm. into the passion and, you know, to the cross. Mm-hmm. Really, literally, in, in just about any of these, the entire life of Christ mm-hmm. is, is contained. Well, this was something that Father Hayes brought up in his meditations the other night and you know many have have also you know looked at this but on in the third joyful mystery with the nativity of christ he's laying on the wood of the manger just as he will lay on the wood of the cross Mm -hmm. 33 years later Mm -hmm. that it's all you know it's a prefiguring you know or the manger as a as a feeding trough you know as a as a foretaste of the eucharist he will give us his body and blood to share 
in a rosary prayed well prayerfully thoughtfully mm-hmm. um there there's that as we were talking about when when you were talking about lexio and chewing on it yeah then um i always like to pray uh the rosary um earlier in the day mm-hmm. um if i do it at bedtime then you know, my yeah. my guardian angel finishes it for me right uh but early in the day and any prayer that if if you're making you know the devotion or setting time aside for prayer in the morning then it gives you that opportunity to walk with it right for the entire day and your your, your day is your mind is not clouded with all the thoughts of the day mm-hmm. at the um you know, at the beginning, of, you know, today, because at the end of the day, you just be thinking about, oh, what happened here today, and you know, what happened there today, and uh, and, and you're praying your rosary, and the repetition, which is meant to protect you from distraction, you're still distracted. <laughs> Whereas at the beginning of the day, hopefully you're you're fresh, or you're you're starting to become alert. This helps you, you know, enter into the day. You know, actually, with that thought, it makes me think of Pope Leo the Thirteenth quote. Um, in terms of praying the rosary, it, he says, flooding the soul of those who devoutly recite it with a sweetness of piety that never grows weary. Mm-hmm. I love that. Right. Yeah. And whereas when you're praying at night, you know, John the 23rd, our, our feast today, he <laughs> had the great line when, you know, all the turmoil of, of the world on his desk coming that day. And then he just said, Lord, it's your church. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so that 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 may that's that's how your rosary may feel if you're doing it right before bedtime. You're mm-hmm. just, uh, Lord, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I can imagine those parents who have young children who mm. perhaps have a lot more energy than they do all day long, and so you hit the you hit your bed at the end of the day and say, you know what, Lord, it's your kids. I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> have you found yourself saying that sometimes? <laughs> um, Olive's not quite there yet. It, mm-hmm. More, more when it's been like 3 a.m. and she's finally, you know, asleep after screaming because of teething. And then I'm like, all right, Lord, I was in bed and now I'm going back to bed. So, um, that, That's was, a prayer you can also carry through the teens and young adults as, as, I am as well. I'm so certain, Dave. <laughs> um, I was also thinking about how in the mysteries of the rosary and in reflecting on them um, that we come to know more about uh, man, about ourselves in Mm -hmm. that way. I'm thinking uh, Gaudium et Spes talks about how um, it's Christ who reveals man to himself and also points to him uh, like his supreme calling. And so uh, looking at both Christ and then also at Our Lady who was fully woman, they're not divine, you know, um, seeing both of them through the mysteries of the rosary and reflecting on their lives, I was just reflecting on like, wow, this also gives me like a guiding compass of like, this is their life and their journey, um, mother and son together. And so models for me what I'm supposed to do, um, all the way through the glorious mysteries, the glorious ones are my favorite. Aquinas talks about how grace begins, what glory achieves, um, ultimately in heaven, what, what glory happens Mm -hmm. in entering into God's glory. That's what grace is beginning in me and and working in me right now. And so when I read the, uh, when I reflect on the glorious mysteries, when I'm praying the rosary, I often think of like, oh, like the resurrection and the ascension into heaven. And um, even like the crowning of Mary as queen of heaven and earth. I'm like, ultimately there is, I find in that my purpose too, of like, that I think is what the Lord wants for me as well as to reach the the glory of the kingdom of heaven and, and to receive the crown of sainthood as it were. And, um, gives me a lot of hope and joy. Mm-hmm. Well, you talk about also what the rosary reveals to us in our human condition, because we are fallen, you know, where we are redeemed by Christ, but the ro- there's also, you could see what's, you know, you may have this in some devotionals, the associated virtue with, with each mystery of the rosary. And so like, with the enunciation, it's humility. Yeah. And this is something for us as we enter into the rosary, considering our fallen nature, but our redemption in Christ, and where are we lacking in certain virtues? And so when we enter into the different mysteries, we could use this as a way, Lord, help me, you know, because of my pride, help me to grow in humility by meditating on 
Our ladies in location. I was going to ask you about that, having a, a resolution as you're mm-hmm. completing a, a decade. Yes, I think that's, and that ties into, you know, this what has grown as the associated virtue mm-hmm. with each mystery. You had offered a tip for people just uh, starting to pray the rosary to perhaps start with one decade. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other tips for people just getting started? Uh, also, what I said with scripture, I think mm-hmm. that could be something, or especially like if, you know, you're a convert and something like the rosary seems very foreign to you because it's, you had nothing with the say in, in a Protestant church, but mm-hmm. you know, if um, you have a, you know, a, a strong knowledge of those scriptures, use those scriptures to help you, you know, in entering into these mysteries. Uh, this would, you know, that would be a good uh, tip. I would also say, look at, you know, what is best for you for praying the rosary. Some people can't pray the rosary in a group. It's just they, you know, they get distracted or you have other too people. Too fast, too slow. Yeah. Can't hear the guy who's leading, you know. it's. But, you know, so maybe, but then some people may not be able to pray it individually. You know, it's just like, <laughs> right. this is taking forever. I can't. So that might also be another tip to look at what is best for you. Is this something that would be a good communal prayer? doing it with a group, or you have to do it individually. Mm-hmm. We have just about three uh, three minutes left, Father Paul. Confraternities mm-hmm. and uh, devotional groups. Uh, right, so the Dominicans are responsible for, or have been entrusted with the confraternity of, Holy Ro- of the Most Holy Rosary. And so the um, confraternity membership basically is for anybody who's baptized and above the age of reason, and the only requirement is that you pray 15 decades of the rosary a week, remembering the the members of the confraternity in your rosaries. And they're mm-hmm. praying for you. That's what a confraternity being a spiritual association is something that you share in the good works of the Dominican order. And you're sharing in the rosaries of all those other members and you're praying for them. So if you pray the rosary every day, you're, you're exceeding the requirements. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, it's something now I, I actually used to be the pr- the provincial promoter of the rosary. When I became pastor, I said, okay, I have to give something up. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, that's, uh, we have a new priest who's about to take that over, mm-hmm. but you could go to rosaryconfraternity.org and enroll. Okay. Uh, sometimes even like a parish can have a local chapter of the rosary confraternity right there in their parish. Doesn't have to be a Dominican parish. So if any priests are If you have a rosary group, you know, or maybe you've heard of something like the Rosary Altar Society or Mm -hmm. some similar name, that would have been the rosary confraternity in a parish. But, you know, sometimes it became more of a a social club or, you know, people who did the altar linens where the focus, no, it's actually members who are focused on praying the rosary. So, you know, if any priests are interested in getting the rosary confraternity established, in your parish as a parish group we have one at saint patrick's they meet once a month they have a discussion they pray the rosary uh, it, it's really an opportunity and, and priests should contact our provincial promoter uh, to get a charter mm-hmm. in their home parish soon to be named he's been named father joseph anthony Cress, who okay. is a actually spent a, a summer at saint patrick's he's a franciscan university grad so the best of both worlds yes from saint Clairsville, ohio so he's a he's a fellow buckeye too <laughs> awesome Father Paul Marich, OP, thanks for being in the cafe with us. Thanks for having me. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Coming up on Monday, we have uh, Pat and Cheryl Schroyer here in the cafe with us. We're going to be talking about some evangelization efforts that they're doing at Miraculous Metal. Amanda, glory be to the Father and to the Son and Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be a world without end. Amen. You guys get out there. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. God bless.